All right, this is just a quick video to show how to use the channels palette as opposed to color range to quickly select colors in Photoshop. In this case, specifically for distress patterns, as you can see, there's a scanned in uh, texture here that we can use as a distress pattern. Uh, we'll be applying it to this triangle right here as it's a really simple example. Basically, since it is a scan, you can see that there's an edge here. This was actually painted on a film. So you can see the film's edge running right over here. Um, we want to get rid of that and also crispen up the image, so to speak. And the best way to do that quickly is with levels. So I bring up levels using Control L on a PC or Option L on a Mac. Um, and you can really quickly, um, basically the blacks are on the left and then the whites are on the right here. So I pull these over and you can really quickly see like if you want it really dark, really light, you know, I kind of go for the middle ground. And then this is the actually the important one to get rid of that edge. You just slide it over a little bit and you can see the edge is very quickly gone. You could go in by hand and erase that, but this is generally quicker. So once you get that looking the way you want, you go into your channels palette, which is right next to layers palette. Um, as you can see, there's RGB color mode. It kind of freaked out from the levels, but that's fine. There's red, there's green, and there's blue. Generally, I pick which one looks the best. In this case, red is much more saturated, has a better look. Um, Typically with black and whites, you won't see too much variance, but with photos, you see a ton. Um, so if you're using photos, that becomes a lot more critical. And what I'll usually do with a photo is actually convert it to black and white before I go into channels. Um, but in any case, to select it, all you got to do is hit Control and then click, or if you're on a Mac, Option and click. And as you can see, it will select the inverse of any black. Um, so I usually just right click, select inverse, so I'm actually selecting the black part of the image as opposed to the white and then I go in here and just hit alt delete which selects your foreground color and fills it so that was a really quick way of just grabbing the texture um, as you can see it's on a transparent background um, all the detail is still there if I just fill this in white you can see it retained everything if you were to use color range you would lose a lot of this fine detail all these you know half tony grays would be gone there is ways to do it in multiple passes, but channels is simply a lot quicker, a lot better for this sort of stuff. From there, I just bring this in, pull the, the layer I want to use, in this case the texture layer, into my document that I'll be working in. Um, I didn't save that, but if you're actually working on something, you probably would want to save that for future reference. Um, the texture is way bigger than I need, so I'm just going to quickly resize it to like 40%. And you can see your image right here below and what will be knocked out. In this case, the black is what will be knocked out. But what I do is I hit Control click or Option click on a Mac to pull that texture. And then I just hide that so I don't have it covering up what I'm looking at. And then I use a mask, which is this guy right here. It's a rectangle with a circle in the middle. Using mask has tons of advantages, the main one being that you're not actually deleting your work behind it, which if you want to make a revision later on, it could be a huge pain if you have to rebuild stuff because you destroyed it by deleting. So just click that and instantly applies the texture. Uh, really quick, really easy. Um, you can actually hit Control i on the actual mask because you can select either your mask or the object that the layer is on right here. But if you select the mask, hit Control i it'll invert it, um, which is a quick way of getting a different look for your texture so you can use whatever looks best. And then you can just kind of like fiddle it around, move it. It automatically will have this link here, which means when you move it, you'll move everything together. But if you want to move just the texture, just take that link off. Um, so just get it to a point where you like it. You know, Then you're pretty much good to go. That's all there is to it. And as you can see, it's all transparent. So if this goes to separation for printing, it's really easy for the printer. And they will really appreciate the fact that you use a mask instead of knocking it out in case they have to make edits. Um, another thing, if you hit shift and click on your mask, it'll disable it so you can quickly see what it looked like before and after. But that pretty much sums it up pretty quick and easy.